this is Naturally Catholic. I'm Heather. Kyle. Let me at least say, and this is Kyle. <laughs> oh my gosh. And um, welcome back. We're so natural and we're Catholic. Naturally Catholic. Okay, so before we get into the fun stuff about this guy, um, we wanted to <laughs> just kind of throw um, some truth bombs out there about some Catholic uh, religious art and statues um, and just give you our thoughts on this because I think it's important to know why we have statues and crucifixes in Catholic art and why that um, can help foster a good relationship. <laughs> like you're staring into the camera like... <laughs> All right, so about five years ago, a little bit after I entered the faith, um, Kyle and I were trying to expand our family, and I ended up having a few miscarriages. And I can remember um, having a ton of mixed emotions about these, and um, it was just kind of a situation where you don't really understand until you're in it. But I remember when I went to the hospital um, with my first miscarriage, and I was sitting in the chair where they call you up to kind of like do the armband or whatever, and there was a crucifix, and I had just entered the faith, faith like a few months, and there was a crucifix. The faith, the, the, faith, church. the church, same thing. Synonymous. I use words in the wrong context, okay? You're no, just going to have to roll with it. You're just going to have to roll with it. Okay. I don't know what that means. It's like the same thing. Like, it's oh, okay. Like All right. So, <laughs> so I, I remember sitting there and seeing this crucifix, and I just felt, before I looked up at the crucifix, I felt like so confused, like, you know, I'm entering the faith, I'm trying to do the right thing, I'm wanting to now grow our family, which previous to that, I, I did not want any more kids, I, I was done, and um, so it just kind of felt like I was getting a slap on the wrist, like, you know, what did I do wrong to deserve this? And I remember looking up at the crucifix and seeing Christ suffering on the crucifix, and just in that moment, I think for me, that was the first time of my now Catholic journey of being able to suffer and understand what it's like to suffer and to give that to God. And so in that moment, I needed to see that crucifix because if I, I don't, if I didn't see it, then I feel like I still would have had this inner turmoil that just kind of like ate at me during that grieving process. And, um, it was almost healing to see that. And so for me, that's my story on, on why I think that, um, having religious art and crucifixes and statues can be a beautiful thing. And I think a lot of people, especially if you're not Catholic, may not understand that. So um, I just wanted to share that uh, story with you guys. Yeah, I mean, having religious art, statues, they can be reminders. They can be little bits of inspiration throughout your day. They can also be things that draw you closer to our Lord. Like Heather said, we as Catholics, and I would, I would uh, speculate other Christians as well, they understand that there is, through suffering, we draw closer to our Lord. And, and that can sound... Um, kind of contradictory, and I've said that before, but there, there is something about in Christ's suffering when we suffer with him or when we offer that up, um, where there's, it, it can be meritorious for us. And so, um, you know, when Heather and I had first got together, um, and, you know, we started planning a family, and then we had a couple kids, and then um, before she'd entered the church and before, you know, we were really kind of honing in on our faith, you know, we had conversations that she didn't want any more kids. And I was very adamant about like, look, you're young before we make any rash decisions. Like uh, we should continue to pray about it. And so it was interesting too, to see how I, as she came into the faith and as we kind of grew closer as husband and wife, we went from her only wanting two kids to us, like praying that Lord, if it's your will, We'll have a litter of kids, I mean, eight, 10. Well, and that's a whole story too. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 55, 60, 60. Yeah, so that's a whole, that's a whole other story for another time. But um, my first two were C-sections, and so my third was a V-back. And I remember telling the Lord, if I could just have this, like if you allow me to be able to birth children naturally, and I can experience that as a woman, I would, I would have as many children as you allow me to, Lord. And then now we're at four. <laughs> and yeah. And counting, hopefully, yeah. God willing. So an interesting side note though, on our third, so Heather had two C-sections, and then for those of you who don't know, like if you're a guy like me, she's like, hey, I'm gonna do a V-back, and I'm like, cool. What's like, that? Uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, but apparently, you know, they're pretty, um, it's it's uh, a, a 
after you get two C-sections, having a V-back is just having it naturally, which if there's scar tissue or if you had C-sections, it can be a cause for concern. So we had a good friend of ours who had actually experienced the same thing. And she had given my wife um, like this little novena to St. Gerard. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know what novenas are, novenas are just uh, like, so we as Catholics, we have saints, we ask them for their intercessory prayers, just like we ask the Blessed bless Mother to pray for us, just like we would ask our spouse or our parents or a friend to pray for us. Well, the saints are fully alive in heaven, right? And so their prayers are very efficacious for us. And so we ask them to pray for us. And so we have novenas, which are maybe 9, 15, 30 days, little prayers. That Sometimes we do. three days. It just, they vary. They vary. And so she had given one to my wife, and it's St. Gerard. And St. Gerard is the patron saint of expected mothers um, and a few other things that I don't know at the top of my head. But it was interesting because throughout this process, she is really um, just growing in faith right after the two miscarriages and then now we're carrying this one to term and there's still some nerves there and so she's saying her novena and our son was born on the feast day of St. Gerard. Gerard. Now that's in the new calendar so like there's the, the new calendar and then there's the traditional calendar so we we kind of go by both because yeah. like she said we go to the, the, the traditional Well this mass. was before we were going to the Latin mass and and it was about the same time. We, it was, well, it, we, we were, would go we a few occasionally, occasionally time. Yeah, occasional. But the interesting thing about that story, and we're kind of veering off topic here, but the interesting thing about that topic or that story is that I delivered two weeks early and I naturally went into labor, which is crazy because it was almost like it was meant to be on that day before it was passed up. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. So there's those, um, that was definitely impactful on me. Like, I was gonna say there's was, those yeah. little things that happen and I'm not someone who believes in coincidence. I think everything happens for a reason. The problem is oftentimes we just aren't looking at it through the eyes of faith. We're looking at it through the eyes of our own kind of uh, human nature mm -hmm. and so when you see a little thing like that and you you think wow Lord like that's the, God's way of saying I'm here or St. Gerard saying I've been praying for you right everything comes through God's grace um, but the saints still pray for us and so it was very that was that was one of those moments too where I think it really strengthened our bond and and just I don't know it was just something really beautiful like that we had him naturally that there were no complications and then our fourth child we had naturally she didn't do any like uh drugs or anything so it was natural it was raw you know and uh by drugs i mean like epidurals and stuff i don't mean like she Girl, oh my drugs. Gosh. and so um so yeah and so you know man god is good yes he is okay so i wanted you to talk about that instance you experienced during work when you were young remember when you told me the story how uh you were talking about there was an instance where you were talking to god and you were asking if his existence was real or something along those lines and then you saw the the cross right mm -hmm. and so this kind of goes into the religious Whoa. items as well so tell that story please yeah so again i think that throughout our lives if we're truly seeking God, um, there will be little things that, that happen in our lives that we can either look as coincidence, but like I said, I don't believe in those, um, or as just the little bit of God saying, here I am, right? Um, and so I can remember in, when I was younger, I was working at my uncle who owns a, a freighting company, a credit company, and uh, you know, I was just uh, struggling with just, what do I even believe anymore? Where am I at spiritually? Like, is there even a God? And so I'm walking through like the yard, right? We have random things that are getting packed up and getting ready to be shipped. And as so I'm like, just pondering this and asking God, you know, are you even real? Like is what, you know, what's the point? And I look up and there was a, uh, it looked like it had been cut, a few I beams put together. And the sun was coming up right, just right behind it perfectly. And across the middle of it said Bethlehem because there's Bethlehem still. But in that moment of just like, you know, I get goosebumps talking about it now, there was just something undeniable about that being almost his way of answering me. Um, and so that, those little things that happened, I think have helped me along the years of continuing to no matter what, even in moments of weakness or dryness, I, I know that God's there. And it's yes. a matter of continuing to see him, to pursue him and to chase after him, right? And just a disclaimer, like we do not, 
uh, worship statues. And I know that that's like a big deal. A lot of people think, oh, Catholics are so weird. They worship like their statues and, and whatnot. And I, I thought the same thing, but it's really just a misunderstanding of, of the faith. And um, one of the many beautiful things that make it what it is. So like on the statues things too, a lot of Protestants, um, and there was even a, a thing back in the early church, um, I think it was the, the iconoclasm, but it was this, just kind of the debate over the statues, over the art and over these things. And whenever we see our Lord talking about no graven images or, or things like that, you know, I think that that's been kind of misunderstood as far as what our Lord was getting at. Um, and so we see in scripture that, you know, you had the, the um, golden serpent that was erected by Moses to heal the Jews who were getting bit by the snakes in the desert. You see where our Lord instructs on the Ark of the Covenant to have the cherubim or the angels aligning and adorning each four corners. You see in the building of the Jerusalem temple that there were angels. And so um, we as Catholics, whenever we have like, for example, the La Pieta is behind us, right? Whenever I see that blessed mother image of her holding Jesus, there's, that's, an, that's a beautiful just reminder of like the mother's love mm -hmm. um, and also her son's sacrifice, our Lord. And so the crucifix that you can see right here behind me. Um, that's a great reminder every morning when I walk downstairs before I go to work that I'm loved um, mm -hmm. and that Jesus laid down his life for me and that, um, you know, people will say, oh, well, Jesus is off the cross. Well, yeah, he's he's risen. I, I get that. But but the point is not that he's off the cross. The point is, look what he did for you yes. on the cross. Yeah. And so um, it's a very, there's a beautiful thing when you see that every morning. And it is a reminder that, hey, there's going to be sacrifices. There's going to be some pain. Um, but you're going to get through it and you're loved. And so um, and so, again, just for the Catholic art and the statues, it's it's more or less like you know and i've heard people say you know you probably carry a picture of your loved ones in your wallet right people will be like oh i'm not gonna put a picture of you know jesus over here or, or like a statue but it's like but yet you you could have your house littered with pictures of you and your family it's like well i mean those are technically images yeah. or your kids might have their favorite sports hero they have a bobblehead of him over here and they've got you know posters of them over here and it's like okay well again you're it's kind of the same you're you, thing. so the question is what is it that you visually want to see who are your heroes is it the michael jack or michael jackson's <laughs> the michael jordan's uh michael jackson's might be some people's hero i don't I think know your mom really loves um, michael jackson i think she did before <laughs> before Just you know but anyway <laughs> um and so and so for me that i guess that's like to have this point like to give something worship uh oh, as like an idol um, and to like put sacrifices before it and think that it's a deity is totally way, way far off base or way removed from having a statue that is nothing more than just that visual representation and a, uh, and, and a really reminder. almost a reminder to prayer. Yeah. Um, and whatever that might be, that, that prayer could be like the holy water font that you have um, uh, right inside of your door, right? It's just a reminder of like, okay, you know, get some holy water, bless yourself before you walk out the door. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah. so, we want you guys to truly see that living a faith-filled life and um, having a bunch of wonderful children that are whiny and beautiful at times is a great thing and it's fun. And um, living a, a, the way that God wants you to live is beautiful. And so, we wanted to, uh, give you guys a few fun facts about us that are strange but true just to kind of help you get to know a little bit more about who we are and kind of like our personality so this was my idea kyle is reluct reluctantly doing this but um what are some fun things about you that are strange but true that i have an amazing head of hair okay well here's my weird but true i can touch my nose with my tongue everyone can do that no they can't prove it no she can't. It's really weird. I can't. I mean, one thing that's cool is I found out that Daniel Boone is my seventh uh, great grandfather. So that's really cool. And Eisenhower's a grandfather. Right? No, 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 Eisenhower's no, a cousin, but that's not the same thing. Having, like, being a direct descendant of Daniel Boone is pretty cool. On my grandmother's side, I think that explains why I have On such a call to go to, prop to get property. Um, I think that's why I like to be outside a lot. And build forts, or use it as your climb excuse trees. to go outside. I love climbing trees. Um, if you're new to this channel, we'd love to have you. We Keys post, 
weekly. Um, we do a video together every Thursday and I also post motherhood videos and all that stuff uh, once a week as well. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and God bless. Hi. You forgot to do this. Oh, you did it, it right coming. when I was doing it. All right. No, that's ahead. the web shooter one. This is like, <laughs> love me.